Hey guys, what's up? Side Destiny. Welcome back. This is the Tea Talks. And this is where I kind of interview my friends, you know, just questions about the industries that they're in, what they're doing, what they're up to, and just kind of how they maneuver those industries. So I'm here with my homegirl, Paula. Hi. <laughs> so you guys have seen her before in probably plenty of my videos. So if you guys have been around for a while and seen my style videos, uh, seen my lookbooks, my killer lookbooks, uh, she probably has a different hair color in every single lookbook that we've done, literally. <laughs> I think it was like lime green, and then what was the other one? Oh gosh, um... So. <laughs> she's, she's like, I don't even know. It was like a black shortcut. It was really, really cute. Yeah. Kind of like spiky in the front, and then the other one was like this bomb, like lime green bob. I think that was like probably one of my favorite looks. Oh, that was one of my favorite. But we're here with her today, and we're going to be discussing uh, mostly relationships uh, with women, just kind of like how, as women, do we have friendships with other women and, you know, not not be catty with it. Like, you know, just keep it very, very cordial, keep it very encouraging, uplifting, especially with the industries and stuff that we're in. Both of us are in the entertainment industry. Yes. As you guys can see, like, she's totally fierce. She's <laughs> dancer, actress, model, everything. And so she is constantly on set having to deal with uh, other women who are auditioning for things and I just think that it's amazing how you manage to maneuver those industries and just have amazing friendships with women and it's an in I don't know if you guys know this this is the fun fact but me and her have known each other since junior high she's my best friend like literally like this is crew right here like this is crew girl this is and so I wanted her to talk to you guys because as, as you guys can see like she's super fierce like bomb style everything like that and so as you can imagine, she probably gets a lot of hate and stuff on set, and so I really want her to talk about her relationships, you know, creating amazing friendships with women on set, um, and just kind of talk a little bit about that. So first, I want to talk about just how you even got into the industry to begin with. Um, late bloomer, um, with my first modeling gig I got into was for um, uh, Femme Fatale Joker themed uh, body paint. It was it's really really dope. Um, I'm gonna insert the photo here for y'all to see. <laughs> um, pretty fire. Um, my friends were uh, makeup artists at um, EI, and um, I modeled for yeah. That that was my first uh, modeling gig, body paint, and first time at uh, Comic Con and uh, LA Comic Con. So it was like convention, like modeling, and um, for I think five to seven hours they uh, did the body paint on me and. Um, uh, like a lot it was like a live demo at the convention center and um, yeah so that was uh, from the jump that was my first gig and then um, it was a uh, second was uh, for destiny's jewelry line and uh, yeah pretty much uh, through friends it was just it, 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 and, and I think that's the best way of doing it honestly um, well, we like we, we like to do things well, organic. We, we, we like, like to that. do things like that. I just feel like in and very like, fate, uh, faded, you know. Oh yeah. Like like just out of nowhere and just so uh, random, which is our style. That's completely Literally. our life is just so <laughs> like free form almost. Absolutely. And I feel like uh, a lot of times when you're in the industry, when you work on projects with people that you just really have good chemistry with, like it flows so much easier. Yes, we fu we fully believe that. Um, of, of course, not all jobs that you book, um, you don't get to choose who you work with. But mm -hmm. for the most part, when we do collaborate and we create, um, we only return to the ones that we do have chemistry with. So, Oh yeah, yeah. those yeah. are the people that you end up working with kind of time and time again. Yeah. And by the way, as y'all know, we have our tea today. So this one is a chocolate orange tea. And uh, this one is a rejuvenate, has like star anise, uh, or star anise, I always pronounce that wrong, um, cinnamon, cardamom, so just a very like potent, rich uh, herbal tea. Kind of rejuvenate your body. She's always working out a lot. She's always sprinting and jogging and <laughs> doing all sorts of things. So there's this one, and then there's our, our chocolate one, which I'm going to indulge in because and I love some chocolate. Yeah, I think I'll have the chocolate too. <laughs> um, so first and foremost, I want to know uh, what makes you crave kind of authentic relationships in the entertainment industry? And I know that seems like a weird question to some of y'all, but if you guys are in the industry itself, you know that a lot of people really just want to create these uh, superficial relationships just so that they can kind of get ahead, just so they can kind of step on people to kind of get where they need to go. And so um, it's a really rare thing to really want and crave deep relationships, meaningful relationships with people that you work with. So that's kind of my question to you. The thing is art, um, 
has been warped into this thing that's very uh, ego based and um, and it shouldn't be um, from the beginning of time um, you know just taking it back to uh, nature and, and what's natural um, art um, should come from a humble and pure place first and foremost when you work in the industry you know you want to work with uh, certain people people have this thing where like they'll, they'll, they'll do anything to to get there and if, mm -hmm. e even if it means um, cutting other people down making them um, feel bad or um, not being genuine not having your own personality so you or style and you bite mm -hmm. off of uh, others that part <laughs> um, and the thing is like if you're an artist and 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 you say that you are um, but you find yourself not having an identity of your own take a step back and and find that to create from like it's it, it's vital for you to have these relationships that um, nurture you and encourage you mm -hmm. safe spaces that you have with others because um, uh, that's that's your home um, from so coming from someone who doesn't like to be home right. at all <laughs> um, we have different definitions of uh, what home is and people can be home mm -hmm. to you so it's important for you to yes make friends um, acquaintances uh, wherever but to also um, to really have your core mm -hmm. your base um, it's really true that your friends define you so mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's interesting because if you guys look kind of like back in the day like in the I, I want to say like mid to late 18th century like into the 19th century and so forth you saw a lot of artists kind of uh, collaborating together and creating these saloons where they would each kind of bounce their ideas off of each other they already had their styles kind of created but they were literally just honing their skills and they would bounce ideas off of people that maybe were in a different art form than them so maybe they were a painter and they would ask for uh, feedback from a writer or from a poet or something like that or from an actor and they all kind of um, you know worked on their art individually but then would come together and kind of bounce ideas off of each other yes. so it's definitely that sort of thing that she's talking about and so I feel like a lot of times in the entertainment industry that whole component is missing like yeah. everybody is so focused on oh I gotta come out with what's, what's the next best thing that they're stealing ideas from each other left and right mm -hmm. so that's why it's like me and her we love working together yeah. there's other people that you know love working with her that she's constantly in collaboration with yes. so uh, those types of relationships are really kind of authentic now for you have you found that in the industry working with other women that it's been difficult to say uh, the least difficult yeah yeah actually yeah. <laughs> sort of my whole life i've kind of i kind of felt that um mm -hmm. yeah um but i'm i'm reversing that i will not become a victim of my environment mm -hmm. I I am the agent the the force to change that so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah you know, I, I, don't I, really I totally know, know what she means how to it's like you, it's like you <laughs> get on set and everybody's like you know they don't really know you yet and so they're kind of like oh okay kind of feeling you out everything seems cool aesthetic you guys are like changing Instagrams like oh what projects have you worked on blah 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 and then little by little it kind of becomes this like superficial thing where you're like really trying to like be there for them and they're just kind of like okay well, well what do you got to offer me like what have you worked on who can you give me what's what's the the name of the number of your uh photographer and the person that does your makeup and the person that does your hair you know that sort of thing yeah. and so um that definitely is something difficult to maneuver and for me like like me and her are like completely different like she's more extroverted i'm like way more introverted and so for me i would get on set and i would just go into a corner and be like i'm doing me I'm gonna be over here um, when y'all need me give me a call but I'm gonna be over here where it's like with her like she really goes and like gets to know everybody and like wants to like authentically know like who you are like what your background is like you know how is your day going like all that kind of stuff like she really goes in when she gets on set and I feel like I that's people. how she continues you do people are art. <laughs> people are art. people are art. I, 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 I think they're God's create God's greatest creation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's there's nature but people, man. 
endless, fascinating, See, always I growing. Forever. I like people watch. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like to watch you from afar. She's you stay the over cut. there. She's yes, the I'd be in the cut. I'm like I can't, I can't. <laughs> but I reached out to the Hive Mind on Facebook um, to kind of ask why do women feel like you know sometimes in their uh, specific industries a lot of these girls are kind of in more artistic industries. Some of them aren't. Um, but why have they found it difficult difficult uh, to have friendships with other women um, in the prospective industries um, and whatnot? So one of them said, uh, they don't make time for me. Also, I don't drink, so it's hard because everyone wants to go out wine tasting or clubbing and that's just not me. I was kind of like, I feel for you, girl. Now, I feel like this is something that you can speak on because for a while, like, you were like, I'm not drinking and you just kind of decided that on your own for a period of time. So what can you say is like maybe a tip for her, for somebody who's just like, she wants to go and be outgoing and hang out with other women, but it's like, she's like, I don't really drink, so I don't really know what to do. There's, um, I don't know if, if you like to go, I, I, I don't know. Um, I'm very organic. I like to just go to random places, mm -hmm. random music events, uh, bookshops, art galleries. And just strike oh, we, up we, conversations. We love the art galleries. Yeah. We love the art galleries. Yeah. Um, park, gardens. It doesn't even matter. You just um, there's. You, you'd be surprised to find that um, not everybody is lit like that. You know, and extra lit. They're like, mm -hmm. they could be, you know. I mean, even when me and her would, would hang out, so for instance, like, we we actually have kind of like a flip situation of what she's talking about here. Like, for me, when me and her would hang out a lot, she wouldn't be drinking, I would be drinking, but she loves to dance and club, and for me, I'd be like, I just want to stand in the corner with my beer and chill and have a good time. Mm -hmm. So it's just like, I think the main thing that you need is really having friends, uh, those relationships with women where they really respect who you are and you just being really upfront about what you are and what you do. Cause it's like yeah. me and her could yeah. go out, have a great time and she will be on the dance for going so hard. And I'll be like, do you boo? I'm going to be over here in the corner. I got my little drink. I'm like doing my I'm little two steps. Sure. Yes. But it's like, I let her do her. I'm not like clung to her the whole night. Like, oh my no, gosh, well we got to be no, no, no. right up on each other. And what if this happens? Like, no, I'm over here minding my business with my little cocktail and she's out there like getting it. Yeah. And I think it's just really being confident enough to have those uh, female relationships where it's like they respect you and who you are and you respect them and you guys kind of have a little bit of give and take, you know? Yeah. So it's it's definitely balance as well as like, you know, recently I've been hearing more about apps like Meetup and stuff like that where you can find people that do you're the specific thing that you do. So if you're like, oh, I, I crochet or I make hats or I make whatever it is, uh, you could probably find a group of women that are really into that on Meetup that, you know, will probably have a lot of your other same interests. Yeah. So uh, let me go back to the hive mind and see what else. Thanks, hive mind. <laughs> <laughs> right. Hey, hive mind. And so the next person says, uh, I have an idea. I'd be busy, but I'd be making time too. Okay, so this, this girl here, I kind of like went through and and talked to her a little bit and she was in the the radio industry and has had difficulty with with women in there too okay so for some of y'all that's a very competitive industry like yeah. low-key yeah. like girls are coming for your neck in that <laughs> um, so her situation mainly is that like she tries to make time but it's just like she's so busy you know hustling and, and doing radio and that sort of thing now I know that this is something that you kind of deal with a little bit because you are always on the move so yeah. how do you maneuver that? <laughs> you got people blowing you up all the time, like, girl, let's go here. Girl, let's go there. Girl, let's do this. So it's like, how do you manage that to be able to kind of sustain those relationships? Um, I'll be completely honest. You um, you definitely learn to say no. Mm. Um, but I do try to pull up to mm -hmm. a lot of things <laughs> because relationships are an investment. And um, you really need um, not even a, we talked earlier about having your core uh, aside from having your core it's really important to just spend time with all sorts of friends that you have in general whether they're close to you or not because like I don't know for me it's like it's like watching Go, going to the theater and watching a movie it's just like even it, it, it's for that one moment but it's just like something about that sparks something in you and you need that human mm -hmm. connection you, you got to make time if you're not making time um but at the same time it's really important for you to step back and um 
have that time to yourself. Don't get so tied up in it that mm-hmm. like others become your identity. You know what I mean? And you mm-hmm. feel lost without it. Um, and this is coming from an extrovert, y'all. So if she's oh, saying super. you need to take yeah, yeah, yeah. time for yourself. Then that's something that you have to do too. You know, it's kind of that I'm balance. Hella a loner, like mm-hmm. hella a loner. And you know, for someone who is extroverted, um, and a lot of people wouldn't think that, but I frequently need those times where it's just God and I. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And this is something that it's very, very interesting that she just touched on that I kind of want to expand more on. Yeah. So. Yeah. As, you know, extroverts, a lot of people, you know, with introverts, there's a lot of misconceptions, but with extrovert, uh, extroverts, there's a lot of misconceptions as well. And so uh, one thing that people kind of automatically think of is, oh, as an extrovert, it means that you constantly have to be around people, clung to people, all this kind of stuff. But she said that she's a loner. So it's like she's always out and about going to different things. Steady, and independent, I, right. steady, mm-hmm. and so. Own. Right, so I want to kind of expand on that more, like you being an extrovert and wanting to go and support people, like how do you gain that kind of confidence to be able to go out and just do things on your own and just be jumping from place to place? Because a lot of people that are extroverted might have that that issue where they constantly feel like they have to go out with somebody. Especially in the entertainment industry, people don't want to seem like that, kind of like, oh, I'm it's, here and I don't know anybody. It's, um, it's, it's not just in the industry, though. It's it's everywhere I go. Mm-hmm. I'm finding that I, I don't find a lot of people like me who will enjoy their own company. Mm. <laughs> um, they do feel like they need other people to um, enjoy uh, the moment a little bit more, or they just don't want to be alone um and i wish i wish others would it's really it's really really nice to have time like that destiny is also like that we're basically we're we're different but we're essentially in our core the same person right Mm -hmm. the shell is different the taste is different the style is different but in essence destiny and i are the same person we we, we literally (laughs) love like all the same stuff we love all the same stuff like we're weird as well in our oh, own yeah. ways, we're, but we're still quirky. hella. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's like, even for me as an introvert, that's something that even I had to learn on that end of the spectrum because it's like, as an introvert, I had to learn to be confident in my solitude and be confident in me going places because one thing that I noticed kind of like growing up was uh, when I would kind of have these friendships or relationships uh, with women where it was like, oh, you know, let's all go out, like, let's do something, like, get the group of girlfriends together. Uh, it just always seemed like nobody ever really wanted to do what I wanted to do. And so, Facts. I, <laughs> right. and so I always felt like a little part of me was dying out. It was like, if we do the same thing again, if we're going to the same little, oh, su- when, when Supper Club was popping or whatever, if we have to go to Supper Club one more time, if we have to do the same little thing, if, like, I was just so burnt out and tired and felt like a part of like my soul was like dying because I was like I want to go to art galleries like I want to go to fashion shows like I wanted to do all these kind of different things that my like group of friends during that time were not really into so I had to learn to be confident and really be like no like this is something that I really want to do this is what excites me this is what makes me passionate this is what makes uh, for me life worth living like yeah. you know doing those certain things and so I had to really learn to just be like we're just gonna have to do it and I feel like the more that I did it, the more that, you know, my group of friends started to kind of match that lifestyle that I wanted. It was like me and you started hanging out more, me and Solaire, who you've seen in some of my videos, me and him started hanging out more and going to art galleries and fashion shows and cool art events and stuff. And it was like, wow, like this is what I really want. And those relationships with those other uh, women where it's like they were doing things that weren't necessarily part of, well, who I consider myself to be, those relationships kind of started tapering off little by little. And it's kind of how you said, like, whoever you surround yourself with, like, that's what you become. That's what you become. You do. So for me, being around that group of females, who it's like, you know, little by little, their friendships started to become, like, more and more and more toxic. You know, it was a lot of, like, backstabbing going around. It was a lot of just kind of, like, basic mindset behavior going on. And I really wanted to elevate. I really love to read, like, self-help books and, and that sort of thing. And so it was kind of like little by little just with the decisions that I was making to support my own dreams and ambitions and things that I wanted to do the more those relationships kind of started to taper off and I was like okay well here we are like we're we're on to the next we're on to the new Mm -hmm. so another person from the hive mind we're just gonna do one more of these two women on here that actually have something uh, similar 
where they talk uh, about how they uh, don't always come off as approachable and uh, come off as uh, intimidating to other women. So uh, have you ever dealt with that? Yeah. <laughs> other women finding you intimidating? I've been, I've been told that. <laughs> You're like, I've, literally. I've, I've been told that. Um, I don't see. I think, I think what it is, because when I met a great, well, first met another great friend of mine, um, she came off that way, like very intimidating. Um, but I asked myself, like, how does how does one even like come off that way? And I think it's because they just know themselves. Mm. They know themselves so well, and they just exude like I don't need anyone. Mm. You need say it again, girl, with the people in the back. You need yeah. people in the back. <laughs> you, need, you need nothing and no one. Just you and God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Everybody else is uh, extra. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah, yeah. And it's so funny because like me and her were literally having this uh, conversation with like one of our friends about just like the vibe that you put out there uh, to people and how the way that you kind of like project yourself to the world, that's kind of like what you get back, especially in relationships. So it's like if you are always kind of like cowering and kind of shrunken away and kind of seeing a little like, you know, timid and like you don't know what's going on, like you're fearful of life like people will come for you and they will tear you to shreds. And I feel like for, for me, that was most of my life. Most of my life, I was like, I just wanna duck and just disappear and hide away. Cause if I pop out of this hole, people will come for me. And it's just like, I was really just they trying do. to mind my, no really, like, I was trying to they mind do. my own business. And I just felt like people were just coming for me. And I was like, I just can't. And so the more that I started kind of reading self-help books, kind of focusing on me and my confidence as a person and loving and caring for myself, the more that I found that people, especially men, were very intimidated by me because it was just like, I don't have time to waste. What do you need from me? No. Hi, what do you want? Hi. <laughs> yes, hi. Like, <laughs> so same thing with her. Like she walks into a room and people are like, ooh, ooh. Like they're like all excited, like, ooh, look at her. But then they don't want to come talk to her. They just kind of stand in the corner and be like, oh, did you see because she's always been like very extraordinary like with everything that she does like she's always changing up her style her hair like she just gives no f's <laughs> so talk a little bit about that like has it always been has that always been you since day one yes <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. i do not care of course um as a teen um, I, I wasn't confident in myself and uh, people thought I was weird. They thought I was hot, <laughs> but weird. Um, so um, the, the confidence that I gained, I mention it quite frequently, but I, I can't not because it's, it's the thing that um, it's everything about me, but um, really God. Mm -hmm. I know myself because I know him and he loves me and um, just has made me so aware of, uh, that I am art, that I am the way that I am. You're art too, and she is too. Mm -hmm. We are, and, um, and, and I know the way that I was crafted and what I am crafted for, and, um, that makes me steady mm -hmm. as much of a butterfly as I am free um living life I'm literally like a little kid everywhere I go but in that I'm solid mm -hmm. in um you know like who I am and like I'm not intimidated by anyone or anything because I have all <laughs> so this is the last question of the day and kind of I would say like the most controversial in a sense, but uh, what do you think of that phrase that uh, people say where relationships with men are easier than relationships with women? Facts. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and why do you believe so? Um, only, I'd like, I have always gotten along with dudes better than uh, girls. Um, mm -hmm. I just like to do things that guys um, did. If you liked, uh, to go hiking, you yeah. like outdoorsy stuff, yeah. you're like super yeah. Yeah. active. Yeah. yeah, not that not that girls nowadays aren't like that. Uh, don't come for me, that's not what I meant. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. just that um, I feel like I just, oh, 
also i just feel like more masculine in the way that i do things because of that independence mm -hmm. um we were having this conversation about uh femininity uh we find that females um just they're very uh nurturing and very like let's let, let's sit down let's 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 do this let's um you know they're very inclusive and mm -hmm. um just nurturing uh, and affectionate yeah and the way that destiny are uh, destiny and i are um we don't really have that <laughs> <laughs> we don't really have that it's just we're yeah. soft we're kind but it's like you present us like a problem um, we're like, we were talking about this at work right. most mo like like very feminine uh girls are Go how do they act um, they're very yeah can I, like can I get you this can I hold well, you what do you, can you I... right yeah and then the both of us were like so uh, I can <laughs> offer you this this is what we can do look right let, let, let me let me give you this real quick I need a box of tissues yeah, uh, yeah, what's, yeah, yeah. what's the problem how do we fix it yeah, like can I get you dinner can not, I not warm well at least on my end like I, I wouldn't say that I'm like super super warm of a person I'm, I'm caring, but I feel like it's it's more in the sense of like it, we give we give solutions. Yeah, uh -huh. there there yeah. there's a solution to everything. But yeah, just overall, we're just not very like soft and tender. Whereas like other women in that sense, like they excel at that like exponentially. Like some women, it's like you could be crying and they'll come up to you and just give you the best and like warmest hug and. Oh my gosh, can I get you anything? Do you need something? Blah, blah, blah. And they're just like there for you, like in the cut. And it's like, like they feel like a soft blanket. Yeah. 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 And like whatever you're going through, whatever the story may be, like they're so validating in that. And they're just like, okay, tell me more about that. How did that happen? Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, uh, um, do you want some food? I can get yeah. some food. <laughs> Let me grab you a box of tissues. And I'm just sitting there like, like, so I found this like, website there. and it says <laughs> right. that, you know, this could help and all of that. And <laughs> right. if you m maybe visit, like... Let me get on Wikipedia and see <laughs> if I can find something for you. Yeah. It's very We're much very, like that. like, we offer solutions because that's lasting. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's going to help you when I have to go home. So yeah. there, there you go. Yeah. So... Chicken wings that they brought you. It's solid. For those of you that are struggling with that, or you know, maybe you feel the same way, maybe you guys can relate to us a little bit on that. Uh, but you guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'm gonna link all of Paula's stuff below for you guys to check out. Instagram, page, everything. And like this video if you wanna see more. I'll be posting more as usual. Make sure to do well and be well, and I'll see y'all later. Bye.